Hi everybody, Lisa here over at Ivory Pair Devices and today in my workbench I have a Bose Acoustic Wave. This is the CD3000 model. This unit came in all the way from Oregon and when I say all the way, I'm in Illinois and um, this client is in Oregon. And um, this unit came in, let's see, customer, oh my goodness, a little too much glare there. Um, let me turn off this overhead light. There we go. When I go to repair or start the repair, I will have to put it back on so I can get some good lighting over here. Um, let's see. Customer indicates um, CD player is not. Oh, CD player is producing producing a chattering sound and will not play CD. So let's go ahead and get started with this and see what they are hearing. So let me get them plugged in. So I am going to plug this in. Uh, plug it in and I'm going to turn the light on above but you know what to eliminate the glare I will turn off my camera here there we go okay so here we have we're going to turn it on and let me just pop in a CD see if we can duplicate what he was hearing all right it's in It's running kind of rough. Huh? Okay, I advanced to the track. I'm not getting any sound. That's track two. Track three. I'm not getting anything. Track four, nothing. It's hard to see there, but as you can see, I'm trying to forward it. So we're on track four. Let's go to track five. And I'm not getting anything from there. So let's stop it. And let's see what's going on with this. So let's take the CD out. All right. I am not going to go through the process of of uh, let's unplug this first I am not going to go through the teardown process um, there are just several screws that you're gonna have to remove from the back here inside and this guy just slides out and we're gonna have to disconnect a couple of these cables here, there we go. Let's slide him off to the side now okay so this is the unit that we're going to be looking at and I will move my camera down here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we've got a couple of clips we need to remove. Just the cable. I've done several, I um, meant not several, I've done dozens of these, so I pretty know I pretty much can do the teardown pretty quickly. So a few screws holding on the board. Now you want to keep them in order because there are long ones and short ones, so you definitely don't want to get them mixed up. All right, we're going to disconnect the speakers. Now we have to pull this out of the housing, so you got to be careful because there are a couple boards on the bottom side, and the way it slides in, you definitely don't want to lift too hard because you can crack those boards. So we're just going to, let's see, i got to get a feel for this. I'll know when I have it. All right, oh, oh it's, it's not releasing. All right. Sometimes these want to struggle with you. Make sure I got all the screws out. I do. All the clips are out. Yep. Okay, it's just a matter of getting it just right. Like I says, there's a couple of boards down here. There we go. All right. Here is the top. And here is the board out of the unit. And here's the CD part. So we're going to be working on this guy right here. So first I gotta just flip this board out of the way here. 
All right. And remove a couple of the screws. So I first, uh, let's see here. First thing, what I'm going to look at is I want to look at the gears. I want to see um, if the gears are clean. I want to look at the rails that they're riding on. I want to see if they're clean or uh, gunked up with, you know, just dust and debris from the years of, of running. So I'm just... Removing the screws from here. Let's get a, get a good view here. Yep. Alright, what I do with the other screw? Went somewhere. Oh well, I'll find it. Alright, this black cap comes off, lid comes off. What did I do with that screw? There it is. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to raise up the drive mechanism here. All right. Now there are connectors on the bottom there that, that um, you normally want to disconnect. But like I've said, I've worked on several, or several, I keep saying that I've worked on dozens of these. So I know uh, how much um, leeway I have for moving this around. So I'm looking at the gears right here. Let me see if I can get you in closer. There we go. And everything looks good here. Nothing's gunked up uh, on the rails down here. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's get a better better view here. We got two rails right here. We got a one long rail and a shorter rail on this side. And I'm not seeing anything gunked up on it. Yes, there is grease, but that's normal grease. It makes it uh, easy to slide across, so that is needed there. The gears look all clean. There's no dust or dirt in there. I mean, I'll give them, I'll give them a quick um, cleaning with alcohol. I will clean the lens. Um, but one thing I do want to look at, and from the let me turn off the overhead light here from working on these in the past and having that chattering sound like it says um they I, I already suspect i know what it is and it's going to be that the optical lens is not getting enough power and when you work on these uh, type of, of devices or anything that has the, the disc lens or optical lens, there is a, 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 um, a pot switch on there. And you can always adjust that accordingly to strengthen the lens. You don't want to uh, shoot it up all the way high because you will burn out the lens a lot faster. So uh, I'm going to take a couple of resistant measurements and I want to see what the current rating is. And then I keep a log of what they should be for each of the different units. So I want to see how close it, it is to what it should be to be running and then make any necessary adjustments um, that, that, that need to be done. Um, this is the first video I, I am recording for working on a Bose uh, wave acoustic. I've, like I said, I've done them in the past, but I never videotaped them. So this is the first one that you're actually seeing me do. I've done the Bose uh, three disc CD changer uh, videos, but this is the first one for the acoustic CD 3000. So let me get my voltmeter here and I want to put it, first of all, I'm going to put it in diode mode because I want to see, or do a continuity test because normally there's three pins on this and I want to find out the ground rails before anything. All right, so it's going to be hard to see it on the on the video here. So uh, down here, let's see, I will try to turn it around. I'm a lefty, so I will try to do this. in a direction that you could see, even though it's going to be uncomfortable for me, but let's see here. All right, let's get this back on. All right, so down here, 
they're all the location is always going to be different for whatever different unit you're going to be working on but the pot switch is sitting right down here i know it's hard to see this this camera zooming in as much as it can but maybe i'll bring it up there all right will it focus for me i doubt it why because i'm videotaping all right let's Let's try this real quick. Let's get auto zoom, auto focus on. There we go. All right, this right above my finger, right where my finger is. I burnt my glove. Right there, that silver knob, that is the pot switch for this device. So what I'm going to do is take a measurement the resistance, and I want to see what the current resistance is on it. So sorry, guys, I have to turn this around so I can work it work because I'm lefty. So let's get the probes in place. Let's put it in resistance mode. And let's see. Maybe you can see it on camera here. There you go. There's my meter. And we're going to see what the resistance is. All right. Four point. Oh, let's jump it around here. Let let let's let it settle down. Probes are moving around, so all right. One point nine ohms. That is totally low. Uh, normally, they are in the range of, oh, again, don't go, don't take these numbers to heart and, and just don't go tearing into your unit if it's not doing it and, and adjusting it to these numbers because um, each time you're going to have to make adjustments as you go along. But normally, these go in the range of 1.0 to uh, 1.3, 1.0 kilo ohms to 1.3 kilo ohms those are normally a good range for the laser to work without um gives it enough power and anything under that causes the chattering and skipping and anything over it you're certainly gonna you're you are certainly going to uh, burn out the lens a lot quicker. You're going to shorten its lifespan. So um, I'm going to take a small screwdriver and adjust the the pot switch. And I can't say potomet put 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 yeah. I'm not even going to try that. I always butcher the word pot switch. Um, I'm going to adjust it and then keep taking readings until I get the the number that I'm looking for. So. Let me get my little screwdriver here. I need a different end on it. There we go. So, and you always want to put a mark of where, where the original. The starting position was at. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it clockwise okay and you're just going to do small increments let's see what we have here now because it was what i say 2.0 ohms i did turn it quite a few ways because i needed to get up to at least the kilo ohms so um All right, we're at 1.25 kilo ohms. I'm liking that number. I'm going to try that. 
And let's see, so you can see it on camera there. So let me put my two probes on the pins and let's get the measurement. There we go, 1.25 kilo ohms. So let's turn this off. Now we have to get this reseated and back into place. And then now sometimes you're going to still have to go through and make tiny adjustments. Um, you're going to have to, you know, put it all back together, plug it in, power it on, put a CD in. It may still skip, take it apart. So this is something that it may take you quite a few times just to get it right. So, um, All right, so let's, let's flip this guy back in the place. Pop it in. All right, let's get this top cover on. Oh, I'm gonna step ahead of myself. All right. Sure, he's clipped in, clipped in on the side there, and we gotta just gotta get these just right. Okay, so we got the plastic lid back into place. So now let's get in the two small screws. Clip back into place. So now let's put on the this board here. Okay, let's carefully flip it over because now I have to put it back into the housing. And let's see. Let's... Let's get you so you can see what I'm doing now. So now I'm just going to flip it over and bring this guy down here. Again, putting it back into place is a little tricky, so you want to be careful how you're putting it back in. Okay. Now let's turn it around. Okay, plug in the speakers all right we need to get this ribbon cable back into place you got to be careful with these ribbon cables because they can easily be torn and ripped and if that's the case good luck trying to get a replacement part for that all right so that's now on so now let's get these two clips back into place and i dropped one come here girls Brandy, it's okay. It's okay. It's just a clip. All right, so let's get. Anytime I drop something, my dogs take off running. So there we go. One clip's back into place. And. Yeah. 
second one is. I'm just going to throw in a couple of the screws. I'm not going to put them all back in, but at least enough to, to hold down the hold down the board. It says you want to make sure you keep the screws lined up because some holes are for the longer screws and some are for the shorter. And if you get them mixed up, you will do damage to the board. So, all right. And just to let everybody know, anybody that has any bow systems laying around that is not working, I repair our device. I repair I devices offers mail in repairs, so you can always email me at the number or email me at the uh, that's located at, at the top right of the screen or you can call at the number that's listed there um, this is where I've been getting a lot of my referrals from so all right we're just gonna connect oh let's see so you can see what I'm doing we're just gonna connect these two cables back into place Now, I'm not looking for it to be perfect in there because, in, just in case I have to take it apart, um, I'm not worried about it. So, let's, uh, let's see. I'll bring this guy over here, maybe. There we go. Well, how about if I, hang there. Let's move him down here. There we go. So, we're going to. Plug them in. Okay, we're going to turn it on. Okay, let's pop in a CD. Let's see. Let's go with the little Christmas. Now, I can't play these long, the, the music, due to copyright protection, but at least it's going to give you uh, some sense if, if, if it's working or not. So... All right, so it's it's in. It's reading track one. There we go. Let's turn off the light up here. There we go. It's reading track one. I remember from the first time when I had it going, it was making a weird sound, and and on the first track it was making a, a weird sound and just. Um, playing normally but when I go to track two and three and forward it would not play so let's test this out here's track two how many tracks are on this 19 so let's go to track three as you can see here okay let's go to four All right, let's go all the way to 16. Let's go to 17 now. And let's just beat through the song. Okay. So, by adjusting the pot switch on the uh, optical lens fixed this unit. Um, the, the rails were clean. The gears were clean. Um, I will go back into the unit. I'm not going to do it on camera here. Uh, it's, just, it's just normal uh, cleaning. I am going to clean the optical lens with a uh, cleaning solution. But as you could see, that, that, that was not the culprit because once I made the adjustment on the optical lens, the, the power... It started playing so this was a successful repair I hope you learned something from this and like I've always said uh, in my previous uh, videos please like share subscribe to my channel uh, hit that bell every time a video is uploaded you'll be notified and if you have any repairs for you know regardless if it's a bow system if it's the CD 3000 or the uh, three disc CD changer or Anything, uh, MacBook, laptops, anything that ne uh, needs board, um, uh, anything electronic board that needs tending to, 
Uh, I Repair Our Devices offers a mail-in service. We are located in Illinois, and um, you will see the email and phone number on the screen there. So until next time, have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.